Oh, yeah. Hello, Good. darling. What's up? Oh, mate, just washed my hair and it's the best feeling in the whole world when you feel like shit. Hey. Wash your hair and you're like, oh, you have two. Yeah. We're so chic, doll. Thanks. You look good. Thank you. I'm going to do what you're doing and make like a cool wall behind me for all my zines. That looks like you've got like Kurt Cabin. Yeah. You've got Bruce Springsteen. That's sick. Yes, ma'am. A little mood wall. Did you make it yourself? Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, with all the time in quarantine or whatever, it gave me an opportunity to kind of scour the internet for inspiration and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I want to make a mood board. I was telling my hubs yesterday, I'm like, we should make a vision board. Like, I know that sounds so lame and hippie, but I like the idea of like seeing what you want. You know what I mean? It's important. And also it sounds maybe weird to say, but a vision board or mood board isn't the same like on a phone than it is in real life. Like it's nice to really look at it because on the phone you've got to like, it's almost impossible to have a vision board because you have to flip between images and the whole idea is that you see all the images together. You know? Yeah. And it's not like you look specifically look at them. It's just in your, it's just around you. So when you walk yeah. past it and then it just becomes part, we're so deep. You and me, Paulie, just classic ass, just gone straight to the heart of things. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what are we now? It's August, September. So we're like, what, seven weeks away from the album dropping or something like that? Yeah, I think that's right, yeah. How are you feeling about the world hearing it? Um, I'm so ready. It's, uh, well, I mean, I think like time does move a little slower, right? Um, during these, like during this year. So it's <laughs> felt like, it's just felt like forever. Um, but, you know, we just dropped a song, You. and It's so good. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, we're already playing it on the show. I saw the, I love the music video. We've got so much to unpack about the song. Okay, so I interrupted you because I was so excited about you talking about you. Um, I, okay, first of all, let's talk about the music video because that yeah. looked like it would have been so epic to film. It was so cool. You know, um, the, that was going to be the first single that we put out, but because of just COVID and everything, we weren't able to, pull it all off. Um, yeah. The initial idea was to shoot it in three um, drastically different uh, like settings. So it was going to be the Grand Canyon. Uh, this was back like early in the year when snow was still on the ground up in Big Bear in California. And then we were going to do like one by the water or on this big cliff. But, you know, you just kind of, you move and you pivot and you adapt. And we were able to pull off this idea where we'd start the beginning of the song in a sunrise kind of situation. And in the span of four and a half minutes, we get to a sunset. So, um, you know, we, we woke up at 3 a.m. and we were out there way before the sun came up and then, you know, played the song like 50 times. And we <laughs> went back to bed, we're back to bed around 10 a.m. probably. And we, you know, slept till four, 4.30. I think lobby call was 4.30. And then we went back out to the salt flats. Um, but it was a really cool experience, you know. So where, for people in Australia, oh, I don't even know where the salt flats are. Like where, where, would, where did you go for that? So it's in the state of Utah. Um, but yeah, I don't know how to describe that. Like I've been still to in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I've been yeah, but to, yeah, so it was, a, it was so cool. And, and we stayed at this, you know, kind of this tiny hotel. Um, and then we would drive miles through the salt flats to find a very kind of deserted location. And uh, we were technically like driven to set because if you look at the video, there's like nothing in sight. So our trailers or where we would like hang out between takes was. Because you need that like, space in the video to make it. Oh, it's so sick. And you have um, like, there's not many things that women get that are like better than what men get. Because usually we have to like have the babies and all do all that shit. But the one thing we have is the joy of wearing a dress. And now, <laughs> we can, now you understand that for all these years, we have been sitting on a Freedom. secret. <laughs> How free <Freedom>. is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a gorgeous feeling. Um, yeah, no, it was cool. I, it wasn't like a big conversation or anything. I just was like, I want to wear a dress. And so, uh, you know, at the beginning of this kind of album cycle or campaign, um, I've been working with this guy named Jake Samus, who's our stylist, and he's just so awesome, and we have very similar tastes, and, 
you know, it's, it's really cool to see the team develop and you, you know, it takes a while, you know, you yeah, uh, out. Um, but we found this guy named Jake Samus and uh, just been amazing to work with. So I give him all my ideas and then he goes and yes. shops for them and sends me photos. And so I think that dress was like a 1960s vintage dress, but we, he, he, he brought like six or seven over that I really liked, but I couldn't fit like my shoulders into it. <laughs> or, you know, so it, it was one of the You're too much that, man fully. No, no, I just, you know, I just, they're, you know, they're very slim. These, Especially these those vintage ones. They're made for women with these like tiny waists. Yeah, I just like couldn't get my arms through a few of them, but uh, that was one that worked out really well. And yeah, it just cool. started. Start cool. Looks sick. And the cool thing is that like in 2020, you can do it. And it's like, I think if it happened like 10 years, apart from like maybe the grunge era where people cared less, I think it would have been a thing, but now it's just like, oh yeah, Paul's in a dress. Oh yeah, cool. The song's cool. <laughs> Which I think is so sick. I was actually kind of like even shook that that many people were, I don't think upset, but just like, yo, why the dress? It's like, what do you mean why the dress? <laughs> like, I, I didn't know that anyone was even asking. Me that. It's weird. Yeah. The first time I watched it with the label, I was like so consumed by the song. I did not even notice. And then like I read it in a press release, like, like an article or something. And I was like, huh? And then I watched it again. I was like, he is too. It really suits you, man. Thanks. Thank you. I, I, that's the same. You know, I watched it back and it's like, I never even really thought, you know, oh my God, he's wearing a dress. You know, yeah. 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 And who's it for? I mean, we don't have to assign any sort of real meaning to anything that you put out I and mean, that's your prerogative, but yeah. I mean, this is so beautiful and so personal, this idea of really being kind of found in a a person or an entity. Where where did that come from? Well, I think like that's what I wanted to do was to write such a big and open song that it could kind of be to whatever the listener was feeling. Does that make sense? Totally. And I think those songs are really hard to write to be honest with you. It's actually really easy to be like, I love your green eyes. And then you're going to (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, like you can get very specific because you're working yeah. with, uh, you know, you know, very real details. But to, you know, to write such overarching, like, massive metaphors to describe uh, a personal thing, it's not easy to do. But you know, I'm, obviously, it's it's paying dividends and people yeah. seem to really connect with it. Beautiful. I never thought about it like that, but that makes total sense that yeah. to be specific and make it about something that people, because if there is any amount of real specificity, it makes someone go, oh, whatever I'm imagining, it's not actually about that, but you don't want that. Yeah. Exactly. Huh. And you worked with one of my favorite songwriters, Sasha Sloan on the album. I don't know in what capacity or I just read her name on the, and yeah. I'm obsessed with her. What was that like? Yeah. So like, uh, you know, she's my favorite songwriter too. Um, <laughs> I first started working with her during Malibu Nights, and I think we wrote four songs together um, for Malibu Nights. But it's gotten to a point where I just kind of almost refuse to go in any room to write a song without her. Wow. Um, she's become such like a safety blanket for me. Just, uh, you know, I just, I call her my brother. Um, cool. you know, it just feels like a family to me at this point, but like a songwriting soulmate, if you will. And uh, I just bounce every idea off her. She's a master at melody. She's incredible at concepts. Mm-hmm. And um, we wrote so many songs off this album together. So okay. shout out Sasha Sloan. Yeah, Sasha, we love you. At what point did you realize? Because all those relationships are so different. Sometimes yeah. I speak to artists who are like the second we met each other, before we even wrote something, we knew we had a connection. Other people, it's like the first couple songs didn't really work, but we knew there was something so yeah. how did the relationship develop? Instantaneously. I mean, the first song we wrote together was Thick and Thin, which was the first song that we wrote for Malibu Nights. And just immediately I knew that this was my home girl. And I continued to try, you know, almost like, you know, walking into a room, trying different things out with songwriters, like dating almost. You know? Yeah. You're like going, okay, this is cool. Or uh, this, you know, you know, maybe. Don't call back. <laughs> Yeah, not the vibe, but um, Sasha's always kind of just always been the vibe and so consistently so that now if I go into a room with a new songwriter that I've never met, um, that somebody I want to work with, I'll oftentimes bring Sasha just so I I have somebody there. Yeah, I can can give anything scarier than like when I hear you guys talking about writing sessions and rocking up 
you know, to someone's house and, I, and you just like, Hey, I'm, if you're not, oh, let's freak me out, man. If you're not on the same page and also there's gotta be a great deal of trust there because if you're going to, you know, bury your soul and your vulnerabilities to somebody, you need to know that like, they're also going to do the same, reciprocate that and show yeah, them some sort of safety and love. So. Love it. And if you think about m- putting mama's boy out there, is there a song in particular that you're like, I really can't wait to hear what people think about this or I can't wait for people to hear this. Is there one in particular or, or just everything? I, it sounds dumb, but kind of everything, you know, I think, you know, the best thing about this album is that there's so many favors. Every song, I, I just feel like there is at least one song on this album for everyone alive. And um, just there's a lot of breadth and uh, depth to the album. Um, there's a few, um, like, you know, Cowboy in LA, I'm so excited to put that out. Um, it's a real kind of, I don't know, it's just a great song. I well, think. you're from Oklahoma and you spent a lot of time in LA, so I would imagine that maybe even a little bit of that is, it's got to be a bit. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty cool. um, you know, there's a song called I Still Talk to Jesus that uh, references, you know, I probably make a lot of life decisions that people uh, traditionally in the church wouldn't approve of yeah. or agree with. Um, and you might not believe it, but I still talk to Jesus. So there's, there's songs like that in there. Um, yeah, I'm sure know, you really. might have like a three hour discussion about the deconstruction of all that crap and that it looks very different now. And people might think, Oh, she's going to hell, but I really do. So I still speak to Jesus and we're good. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's so exactly. much in there, man. I hear that. Yeah. So I'm excited and- to just. It out, you know? Yay! Well, you know, I can't wait to hear it. And um, we will always be your biggest fans here at Ash London Live. And we're so stoked that, you know, that. number three is coming. We love ya. It's good to see you looking so well. I'm going to make a mood board. I'm going to think of you, my darling. Love you, Ash. Thank you so much. Love you too, Paula. Take care, darling. Bye-bye.